I believe CDC and CMS were wrong. Governor Cuomo, yes. your time has expired. The time has expired. And Mr. Chairman, well, point of order just about this. When a question there wasn't is, a question. Okay, but in there general. There wasn't a question. I, no, I've noticed a pattern, Mr. Chairman. When, when a question is posed to the witness, does he have uh, the opportunity to answer it before he moves on? Because otherwise. Mr. Raskin. That's a point of order. Mr. Raskin, you got an additional like minute and a half. And the, the guy Your before me got two minutes. Your time expired when you asked the last question. Okay. We need You're to changing this. the subject. I'm asking you no, a point of order. We need to keep this I'm asking you a point of order, which is. No. If someone poses him a question with four minutes and 59 seconds expired, he then he can question. answer it? Yes? It's not a valid point of order because it's now Ms. Ross's time. So you're not going to answer the question? Um, today's hearing raises important questions about the work the federal government must do to protect and advance the health of our nation's seniors and nursing home residents. During our prior hearing on this topic in May of last year, we heard about the essential role that COVID-19 vaccines played in turning the tide on the pandemic in nursing homes. However, the Trump administration's sluggish and disorganized rollout of the COVID-19 vaccine in the final weeks of 2020 cost us valuable time at a period when thousands of Americans were dying every day. Moreover, families across the country were overwhelmed by feelings of helplessness as they could not visit their loved ones or know how they were doing. During the early stages of the COVID-19 pandemics, nursing homes were under extreme pressure, and we've heard about that today. They faced severe shortages of PPE, staffing issues, and lack sufficient inf infection control measures. Nursing homes were hot spots for COVID-19 infections due to the vulnerability of elderly residents in close living conditions. By May 2020, over 28,000 nursing home residents and staff nationwide had died from the virus. By early 2021, my home state of North Carolina reported that about 6% of total COVID-19 cases occurred in long-term care facilities. But these cases accounted for approximately 44% of the state's deaths. Nursing home administrators such as Amanda Pack from White Oak Manor in Charlotte described the situation as one of the most terrifying experiences in her decades-long careers. Several facilities faced overwhelming outbreaks with hundreds of residents and staff infected. This was a nationwide problem, not just a New York problem. Governor Cuomo, what challenges did your state face in working with the Trump administration on the COVID-19 vaccines rollouts, and what improvements could have been made to the vaccine rollout process that it would have saved lives? Congresswoman, thank you very much. The uh, uh, congressman quoted me as saying, uh, fire through dry grass. You didn't have to be a genius to understand that uh, this was going to be a problem in nursing homes. The first experience was the Kirkland Nursing Home in Seattle, Washington, where 30 out of about 100 residents were COVID positive. So we knew exactly where it was going uh, and nothing was done. The, the first step is testing. You cannot do anything without testing. And in this case, the testing, first of all, the CDCs insisted on doing testing themselves they would not allow our state laboratory to do testing. Second of all, the CDC refused to use the WHO, which had already uh, come up with a test that was developed in Germany. And Governor, I would like you to answer the question about the vaccines because I have one more I'm thing sorry. to do after you the, finish. Uh, the vaccine rollout was painfully slow. Uh, it was constant mismanagement and delay by the federal government. 
Thank you. Um, just last month, the Department of Health and Human Services Office of the Inspector General released a report highlighting the need for strengthened state survey and oversight activities to ensure that infection prevention requirements are appropriately followed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to seek unanimous consent to enter this HHS OIG report into the hearing record. So ordered. I also want to point out that Dr. Ruiz's Safer Nursing Home Act is about the kind of forward thinking work that this committee needs to do. Um, I hope that it's a bipartisan bill. I hope that we can get it done before the end of this Congress, because going forward, sustained investment in these types of activities will help ensure that our nation's nursing homes are better equipped to respond to future infectious disease threats. And my hope is that this legislation can be a starting point. Thank you, and I yield back. I now recognize Ms. Lesko from Arizona for five minutes of questions. 